Hey, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do this. We're going to be creating a flight kind of model for a space game with uh, lots of degrees of movement. It's not going to be scientifically accurate. It's going to be a bit more arcadey. Think more like Everspace than sort of Elite. I hope you'll agree that it looks quite cool. So we'll just get started. Uh, here I am in the Unity Hub, and I can just hit New here. And we'll uh, go on the Universal Render Pipeline. I'll put it into my Unity Projects folder, and I'll just call this um, Space Game Tutorial. And we'll hit Create. Uh, while that's loading, um, we're going to go over to the Asset Store and get some uh, Skyboxes. Uh, you can see here there are some free ones. I'll put the link in the description below. Um, so I'm just going to add that to my assets. So I'm logged in. I'll add that to my assets, and I'll accept that. Uh, and the next thing we want to do is we want to grab a spaceship. Again, I'll put that in. I'll put this in the description. This is a free model I found on Sketchfab. You can see it's pretty cool. I really like this uh, model. So we will um, download the 3D model. Attribution is required. Like I said, the link will be uh, in the description below. And I will download this just as the original blend file. So that's downloaded here. You can see here we've got source, which is the zip file. Here's the blender file, and here's the uh, materials, which are really cool. So let's just go over to uh, Unity. So here we are. We've got the default kind of universal render pipeline seen here. Uh, I'm just going to delete the example assets because we don't need those. Delete the readme. Don't need that. Tutorial info. Don't need that. Example assets. Don't need those. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is if we go up to um, Window and Package Manager, I'm going to swap over to My Assets first. And I'm going to download the Skybox assets that we just got. Let's uh, refresh the list. Load eight. There you go. Um, so I've got a couple here. I've got uh, this one. This one was a paid one that I got on a discount in a sale. Um, we use the free ones. I'll use the free one. I'll use the free ones alongside you. Uh, this is the Deep Space Skybox. So let's go over here. Deep Space Skybox. Hopefully these will be good. Let's give it a download. I mean, if they're not good, there are other paid ones. Um, the ones I've been using has been uh, this one, but it's currently like $80. I think I got it in one of the Unity Mega Sales you know, back in March 14, 2020. So um, it's been a while since I got that, and yeah, I got that on a sale. So, And it's also 2 gig, so it'll take a while to download. Let's just see what this is like. So we'll go to Import. Uh, import all of those. And it might be this may actually come with some scenes already set up. Let's have a look. Uh, Deep Space Skybox, Galaxy Fire. Let's try that. It doesn't look like um, it's come with any pre soap scenes, so we'll have to go to Window, Rendering Lighting. So we'll go Light in here. I'm going to dock this up here. Under environment, where it says skybox material, let's drop in the material. And you see we've got a cool skybox. Let's check out one of the other ones. Got the galactic green. Also pretty cool. And this has also come with diverse space. Which, I quite like that one. Looks good to me. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab my game tab and dock that down here and then set the free aspect from change it from free aspect to 16 by 9 because that's going to be more video game video gamey uh, and then I'm going to go over to the material and just see if I can um, brighten that up a bit get some bloom uh, oh you can also rotate it which is cool and 
I have a tint here if you want to tint it any. If you want to change the tint on the color, uh, you could do that there as well, but that's kind of beyond the scope of the video. Um, so we've got the skybox, which is pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to turn that down a bit. It's a bit too, in, a bit too intense. I'll just rotate it like that. Okay. Um, so the next thing we want to do is we go over to our assets and we can make a folder called models. We'll go to our downloaded blend file and just drag in the spaceship into the model folder. Just let that do its thing. So here we can see that they, uh, the model is here. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to drag in the maps alongside it for the materials. So if we click back onto the model in the inspector, we can click extract materials. Uh, and I'll just drop that in the model folder for now. Okay, so that's created a material here. So now in this material that it's created, that's linked to the spaceship. We can drag in the diffuse map into the base map. I'm just going to drag the model into the ship so we can see what's going on here as well. Let's so cut back onto materials. So we've got the diffuse map. We've got a check the emission box. We've got an emission map. The normal map, we just want to hit change that to a normal map. Go back to our material. Oh, sorry. You have to hit apply. Go back to our material. Drag our normal map in. And then we've also got a specular map, which uh, for that you'll need to go from workflow mode uh, metallic to specular. And then we can just drag in the specular map here. So here you can see we have our spaceship, which seems quite large. Uh, I'm just going to reset this back to just 111. See, it looks like it came in a little bit scaled. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is I'm just going to save save this scene, go up to Window, Package Manager, then go to um, back to the Unity Registry, and let's enable the new Unity input system. It's just here as input system, Hit install. It's going to need to restart and it will take a little bit uh, of time. So I'll just come back to that. So I'll just come back to it once it's done. Okay, so here I am back uh, in Unity. Now it's refreshed. Uh, now it's restarted with the input system. So we're going to need to create a new action map now. So, okay, so we're going to right click, click create and then input actions. And we'll just call this um, player controls. And let's just open this up here. Um, I'm not going to cover the input system completely in depth, uh, but I'll show you how, how we'll get this set up. So, so what we're going to want here is we want to make a new action map and just call this uh, ship controls. And then we're going to need quite a few controls for this. So we're going to want to double click our first action here and call this uh, thrust. And this is going to be a pass through button. And then we want to right click the name thrust and click add 1D axis composite. And we'll just call this um, thrust KB for keyboard. And then I'm just going to duplicate this one and call it thrust controller for uh, the controller. So the positive uh, for the negative key here. Uh, we want to click path, listen, and then press W on the keyboard for the W key. And then for path uh, backwards, and then for backwards thrust, we just want to hit S on the keyboard here. And then for the controller, uh, we can do path, gamepad, left stick down, and then path, gamepad, left stick up for the thrust. And um, you could also do listen and then um, hit it hit the button on the controller as well. Okay, so then we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing again. So we need a new action, we'll call this strafe. We're gonna right click and add a 1D axis composite and we'll call this strafe KB. Duplicate, strafe controller. So the negative strafe here is gonna be the A key and the positive strafe is gonna be the D key. And on a controller, we're going to have the left stick left and the left stick right. And we can delete this empty bind in here. So right click, delete. And we're going to go to actions, have a new action, 
pull this one up down. Again, right click, 1D axis, and we'll call this up down KB for keyboard. 1D axis, up down controller. Now this is up to you how you want these keys. Um, I'm going to do space, uh, sorry, control for the down. So this will push us downwards and I'm going to use space to go upwards. And on a controller to go down, I'm going to use the left shoulder and to go up, I will use the right shoulder. Uh, so the next thing will be a control to roll. Again, 1D axis, this will be roll KB. Delete that. 1D axis, roll controller. The negative, I'm going to use Q. With the positive, I'm going to use E. For the negative on the controller, I'm going to use the left trigger. And for the roll on the controller to go with the positive, I'm going to use gamepad, right trigger. And finally, we want to be able to pitch and yaw. So we'll do pitch yaw. This one is going to be a pass through vector two. And then for this, we're going to use the uh, right stick for the controller. A ladder binding, and we'll use the mouse. Uh, you can use delta or position, uh, but then we'd have to calculate how far away the position is from the screen. So delta is the easiest one to. Sorry about the dog jingling. They they seem to be very itchy and making their tags go jingle. Um, we're just going to use delta for the mouse here. Uh, and the other thing is, if we want to swap back and forth, kind of with. Um, between the keyboard and the controller easily. Yeah, you want to just swap this to pass through on all of these and leave them as pass through buttons. And then don't forget to save the asset. Um, while you're working on this, you can also have auto save and then every time you do it, it'll save. Um, but yeah, that should be all our controllers. We can come back to that and uh, change that if we need to. Okay, so now we can do some coding. So I'm just going to create an empty object here, and I'm just going to call this ship. And then underneath that, I'm going to create an empty and call this uh, ship graphics. And then we can put the spaceship parented to the ship graphics, and we'll zero that out. And then we will, oh, that's already zeroed. And then we can zero that out as well. So now we've got an empty that's in the middle of our scene here. The graphics are parented to the ship, and then the actual like model itself is a child of this. This means that we could have a ship here, and then underneath the ship graphics, we could put uh, like trail renderers on here, which we'll do now, um, just so we can actually see the movement a bit easier. So for that, what we want to do is underneath ship graphics, let's create a, an empty again, and we'll just call this trail. And for this model, let's just place it kind of in front of the engine here. And then to this, we'll add a trail renderer component. In our materials, we'll just create a material called ship trail. We can swap this to we can swap this to a URP uh, unlit shader. And kind of if we pick this kind of like nice blue color from the engines, we can go back to our trail, grab, spin down materials here. And then where it says material, we can just drop the uh, unlit material here. Um, we could also play with this actually. If we, if we did want some emission, for example, uh, we could go back to lit. Yeah, and let's have let's have some emission. We'll pick this color here. Um, bump up the intensity to see if we can get a bit of glow. Um, I'll make it a little bit darker as well. 
so you should see now that when we move the ship, we've got this massive trail behind it, which is a little bit too extreme. So let's go back to our trail here. And we can drag down the width of the trail to kind of match the engine. And then if we double click somewhere on the trail and then drag this down, kind of to here. Now when we drag the ship, it'll have a trail that kind of peters out at the end. We can set the time here to something like two. So you that back out. Again, you might want to play with this a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna set this to one actually. So as the ship moves, it'll have a trail behind it like that. It'll look better once it's actually in motion. Um, I'm just gonna put one on the other engine. So I'm just gonna copy this trail and I'll move that on the Z axis, I suppose. Hang on. Our ship here is pointing. Is it pointing in the wrong direction? Local. Oh no, it is pointing in the right direction. No, it's not. Okay, so this is forward. The, the blue axis is forward and the ship's pointing the wrong way. So uh, we just want to get the actual graphics and rotate it on the negative 90Z. Okay, so now that's going along the global Z axis, which is its forward. Um, this means our trails are gonna be out of line. We'll just move, move the trail back into position and I'll duplicate it. And then we wanna make this positive X. Okay, so now we've got our two trails and that's positioned under the engine. So as we go, you can see that we've got this effect here. And that'll just allow us to see kind of a bit more because there's no real depth to the scene. It'd be hard really to see the movement. For the camera, uh, we want to come up here to window. And the easiest way to get a cool camera here is to go to window, package manager, and enable Cinemachine. So we'll just install Cinemachine. Okay, so now Cinemachine's installed. Uh, we can come up here to Cinemachine and create a virtual camera. And that creates it at the position here that we had kind of the scene view camera at. Um, and now you'll see on our main camera, we have a Cinemachine brain. Uh, again, this isn't a Cinemachine tutorial, but we'll quickly just run through the setup. Uh, so here for ship, what we need to do is we need to create another empty and call this the ship look target. And for now that's zeroed out. Um, we're gonna have like third person kind of behind the ship control. So we'll just move our empty back here. And to make it a bit easier to see, I'm just gonna pop a little marker on it. So we know that this is where the camera is gonna try and position itself and look at. Um, and we can see that here. So if we go into our camera and drag our ship into the follow. Oh, sorry, so follow, we need the ship look target in there. And then under aim, we have this as same as follow target. And then the damping here is when we move the ship, the, the camera will move slightly and it'll dampen itself on these access to this kind of amount. Um, I'll show you that work in, in a second. So you can see now we've got the position of our ship. Uh, we might wanna position this a bit more like that. Maybe rotate it on the X axis a bit. For our VCAM here, uh, we want the shoulder offset to be zero on the X. Because uh, this is designed for third person, kind of like over the shoulder, like that. But we want to be in the middle. Um, and actually, I'm just going to change the background material because it's a little bit... <sighs> it's nice, but it's a little bit too much. It's a bit distracting. There we go. I have this darker one. I'm just going to rotate the sun slightly okay so back to the inspector so we've got our ship here we've got the camera following it as we move it as we move the ship the trail should go we can see here what's going on so it's finally time to do some coding so if we go over to our ship here and we will add in our ship rigid body script 
Or we'll just call it spaceship. We will open this up in Visual Studio or whichever IDE you like to use. Okay, um, the first thing I want to do is just in case we add this in the future to any other ships, I just want to do type of require component, type of rigid body, and that, and then we'll have to just manually add the rigid body to this now. Um, that's no problem. So while we're here, we'll just set up the rigid body uh, now. Uh, we don't want to use gravity for this, obviously, because we're in space. Uh, drag and angular drag. There isn't any drag in space. Um, interpolate. We want to swap that to interpolate, not none. Otherwise, it can look a little bit jittery. Um, so that's it for the rigid body setup. So now back in the script, we need a load of values to control how this is actually going to move. So I'm just going to copy them over from my test kind of project and I'll go through them one by one just to save me manually typing them all. Um, so obviously feel free to pause the video and copy this now. Um, so the first thing we've got, uh, we have a header here. This is just so it looks better in the inspector so I can, it breaks it up slightly. Um, we have our serialized fields and that's just so we can get these private floats showing in the inspector and tweak them. Um, but they're still private so other scripts can't interfere with them. So we've got your pitch, torque and roll, as well as thrust, the upward thrust and the left right sort of strafing thrust. Just for in case you're not aware, if we get our uh, little gizmo up here for the rotation, so your is going to be this axis so it'll spin left and right like that. Roll is this so it'll the ship will roll left and right, like do a barrel roll. And pitch is this up and down movement. So you'll pull the nose up. So as you're moving forward, you'll go that way then, is it up? So let's just reset all of the rotations. And what the speeds here do, the your torque pitch roll, it just controls how fast we can spin round or pitch up or roll. Um, the up thrust is going to control how fast we can do vertical up and down movements. The strafe thrust is how quick we can go left to right. And then these reductions is kind of how fast we slow down. So we've got a bit more control here than instead of having it drag in the rigid body. Um, this is kind of more like we'll glide forward and then the, the engines of the ship will actually bring us to a stop because you don't always want to be going, going forward. And without that glide reduction and any drag, you would just go indefinitely. Um, with no gravity in the physics simulation. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is in the start, um, it's just underneath here, we want to get a reference to our rigid body. So I'm just going to call it rigid body RB. And we'll do RB equals get component rigid body. And that's that for now for the rigid body. And then in the update, I'm just going to make a method called handle movement and I'll make that here so we need a void handle movement method and I'm actually going to change this to fixed update because it's physics uh, we want it to be independent of the frame rate and to be done during the physics step so we can do that here by just changing this to fixed update uh, I'm just gonna get rid of these Okay, so to handle the movement, we need to have some input from the player. So I've just copied this over. So I've got a region here called input methods, um, and that ends there. And this is just going to control um, some input values up here, which we can add in. So we've got a private float for the thrust, one for the up down uh, axis, one for the strafe axis, one for the roll axis and private vector two for the pitch yaw. Um, so we just need to add these in under, under the rigid body. Uh, we also need to come up here and do using unity engine dot input system. And then in the input methods, uh, we need to do a public void on thrust, on strafe, on up, down, on roll, and on pitch yaw. These all take in the input action dot callback context context. And it's from this context, which is the, the button. Um, so basically, when we press the button on the controller or the keyboard, uh, we're going to set up in a second. So it accesses this. 
uh, the correct method. It'll pass the controller through. It'll pass the button through and we can read values from those buttons that were pressed. So uh, we can read floats here for our 1D axes, axes and then on pitch your, uh, that's a vector two. So we can read that here as well. So again, just put these underneath handle input. Uh, so just put these here under handle movement. Um, and now if we go back over to the engine, on the ship, uh, we need to add in an input player input uh, component. For the action asset, uh, we need our player controls. For behavior, we want to do invoke unity events. Then if we open up events, open up ship controls, you can see here these correlate These events, so ship controls, that's ship controls. These actions all are here now, and it's the callback context, which is this here. So it's gonna pass a callback, it's gonna, when we use the thrust action, um, there will be a thing, a callback context that gets passed along with this Unity event. Uh, so we just need to hook these up to our script. So I'm gonna collapse these two for now, just so we can do this a bit easier. So uh, you need to hit the plus, Drag spaceship in here, go spaceship. So this is thrust, so we do on thrust. First strafe, again, drag in spaceship. Choose spaceship here, on strafe. And you can do that for the rest of them with the relevant um, events. Okay, so here you can see we've got the thrust set up, the strafe, the up, down, the roll, the pitch yaw. Um, so that's our input setup. So we go back to our script here. So now when we use, when we press the relevant keys on the keyboard or the controller, say an Xbox controller, uh, this thrust 1D value will get set to uh, the value from this. So when we press W on the keyboard, the thrust 1D will be equal to one because it's the positive uh, 1D axis. And if we press S, this will be set to minus one. And if we're not pressing anything, it'll be zero. So under handle movement, so here under handle movement, uh, we want to add the some relative torque based on what we're doing at first. So we'll do RB, add relative uh, torque. So for roll, to roll it, to handle rolling, we can do vector three dot back times this by our roll 1D float, times this by the roll torque, and then we want to times that by time dot delta time. And this is our Rick roll. <laughs> roll. Um, so what we're doing here is we're along the back vector, which is, if we hover over it, you can see that's Z minus one. Um, it could be vector three dot forward. It doesn't really matter. It just means that it's going to roll around that forward axis. So this is the the forward axis. It's actually so vector three dot back is pointing this way, and it's going to roll around that axis. So you you imagine here, there's a line going down the center of the ship. It's going to roll around that axis. Same with our roll D. If that's plus one, if if we're holding a key and it's it's one. Obviously the back one times one is still one, but then we times that by the roll torque and that'll control how fast we're turning. If we do, if we're not pressing anything, obviously vector three dot back times zero will be zero. So the rest of this won't matter. So we won't be rolling. Um, and we do a similar thing. We do this, this a similar thing for the pitch. So we do RB dot add relative torque vector three dot right times mathf dot clamp and we just want to make sure this doesn't exceed one or minus one which it can do sometimes uh, I'm not 100% sure why it does it 
But again, that's the same thing. So it's it's going to add torque around the right axis. And then for the yaw, we want to do vector three dot up times mathf dot clamp pitch your dot x negative one f by one f times by the your torque times by time dot delta time. Uh, the reason I've done negative y here, which is the up down movement for the pitch, is that if you is I don't like uh, the controls inverted, so when it goes up, I want the nose of the ship to go up. If you prefer it the other way around, which for some flight games people do, um, you can just leave that as pitch your um, without the minus. Uh, but again, I like it non-inverted, so the ship nose goes where I'm moving the controller. And it's the y-axis, because this is related to the stick or the mouse. So if you see the cursor here on the screen, the x-axis is going left and right. So that's here, the, the x-axis is the yaw, because we're going to move left and right, and then the y-axis is up and down. So that's the value of this vector 2 here. So if we go back over to Unity now and hit play, we should see that kind of working. So we go here, we can move up, oh, that's a bit fast. We can move down, we can spin left and right, and we can roll with the keyboard keys. And we'll keep on going because we haven't in, uh, we haven't sorted out the gliding mechanic yet to slow us down. So now we can move the nose of the ship. Let's do it so we can move forward. So we'll start with the thrust next. So we want to do if thrust one d is greater than zero point one f or thrust one d is less than minus 0 0.1f then we know we're press we're definitely pressing a key and we want to go um the reason we have to do this if statement is because i'm using a controller if you're only planning to do a keyboard you don't need it but with the controller uh, you can have kind of 0 0.05 on the stick and it's a bit too sensitive so we can do this to just so we can put this check in to just make sure we're actually pressing the stick kind of intentionally and it's not just drifting for like uh, joystick drift then we just need to do a float get our current thrust and then we can do rb dot add relative force vector three dot forward times by thrust 1d times by our current thrust, times by time dot delta time. Um, for current thrust, I'm just going to set this equal to thrust, which we've set up above just for now. Uh, current thrust comes into handy comes in handy later for when we're doing um, boosting. And then we want to set glide oh, equal to our thrust. So if we're not pressing any of the keys, in our glide here, we just need to make a, another private float called glide. Set that equal to 0 0.f at first. Actually, even if we are keep using a keyboard, we still need this because of this else statement. Because if we're not pressing anything, so if, if it equals 0, um, then we want to add relative force vector three dot forward times by the glide times by time dot delta time and then we're going to reduce glide by the thrust glide reduction so every frame this glide every fixed physics frame this is glide reduction is going to this glide amount is going to be reduced which means the force is going to be reduced so over time uh, we'll eventually just glide will be zero and we won't be moving. So again, we can see that in action. We press play. Press W on the keyboard, you can see we move forward.
Got a bit crazy there while we spin the camera around. So if we go back to our spaceship here, uh, we can make the glide reduction something like 0 0.5. Maybe set the pitch to 500, yaw to 250, roll to 500. Move our camera. Press play. And you can see we're adding force in the forward vector and we're going kind of the direction that we point with the mouse. The pitch in yours is still quite sensitive with my mouse. Um, I'm actually going to reduce that even further. Say 200 and 100. There you go, so that's a bit more a bit more responsive. So we can turn left and right and go forward and go backwards. And we can spin out of control if the mouse leaves the screen. So then, now we've done the thrust, it's the exact same for the up and down in the stray thing. I'll just copy and paste that in. So we've got our up down. So it's instead of up thrust, it's instead of if thrust, it's if up down. And we're going, the relative force is going up, pushing the, the player up. And then add relative force right is vector3.right, strafe1d, and strafing here. We can see that. Um, and we just need to add in our vertical glide as well as our horizontal glide. I'll leave that on the screen here for you. Um, so yeah, we've got if up down 1D or uh, is greater than or less than 0 0.1. We've got our relative force, which is the vector three dot up times up down up thrust fixed out of time, same with the straight. The only difference here is the vertical glide and the horizontal glide. Uh, we times the up down with the up thrust, same with the strafe 1D and the straight thrust, and then we reduce it here with the glide reduction. So now if I don't move the can, the mouse just so we can see this so we can go left we can go right we can go up and we can go down we can roll very quickly still a bit too quick we can go forwards and we can go backwards So I'll roll talk here. Let's make that 100. Just reduce that to 100. Pitch 100 as well. We can go forward, left, right, down, up. We can move the ship up. We can move the ship down. We can move the ship left, we can move the ship right, and we can roll. Do you see the camera has got like a bit of a delay on it? Um, what we can do is actually on the rigid body, um, for the rolling, I will introduce a little bit of angular drag just to stop it. Otherwise it can end up just spinning forever and we'd have to do a similar glide reduction to, to the roll. Uh, but we can roll and with angular drag it will eventually come to a stop and um, we can control that angular drag we can make that one two uh, just whatever feels good for you um, in terms of the camera i like to get rid of uh to lower the damping on the x and the y and increase it slightly on the z so what that means is that when we push forward the ship has to go forward a little bit and then the camera is kind of like lagging behind it just slightly but for the left and right it's a bit more tighter in so that means when you roll it doesn't get as out of sync and it it figures itself out a lot quicker as well we'll be upside down we can fly so now the next thing we want to do is we just want to be able to um 
boost. Okay, so the last thing to do with the movement is to uh, introduce boosting, uh, which we can do quite easily. I'm just going to copy this header so I don't have to type it all out again. And so the ship movement settings, we'll have this as boost settings. And we just need a couple of uh, fields here. So we've got a serialized field, max boost amount, so that's how long we can boost for. Uh, the boost deprecation rate. So max boost amount is kind of like, say how big the boost tank is, if that makes any sense. Um, the boost deprecation rate is how quickly, uh, whilst the player is holding the boost button, um, the sort of like tank's depleted. The recharge rate is when they're not pressing the button, how quickly it uh, refills. And then the boost multiplier is kind of like how fast the boost actually makes the player go. So to sort of handle the boost in, uh, we need to introduce a boost button. So under player controls, uh, we can do a new uh, button called boost. So for the path, I'll do shift on the keyboard. Add a binding. For a gamepad, we can use the east button, which should be B on an Xbox controller. And this one is just pass through and a button again. Um, so that's on autosave. If you don't have autosave check, just click save asset. I'm going to go back to our ship, uh, go back to the script. Then down here with our inputs, we just need a public void on boost with an input action dot callback context called context. So here we're going to have a bool called boosting and we're going to set that equal to context.performed. And actually we need to go back to our player control script here and on boost change interactions to um, press and press only. So it'll only trigger once it's been pressed. Uh, the normal kind of default interaction is that when you press it, it fires and when you let go it fires and we don't want, uh, we don't want that. We only want it to fire when it's on when it's first pressed. So we can go up to our boost settings here. Um, I'm just gonna make this public uh, just so we can see it in the inspector easily. Um, it doesn't need to be public. I guess that's a false by default. It's just so when we can see it working because there's no kind of like hood uh, showing this yet. And that's kind of out of the scope of this video. Um, but yeah, we've got our bool here called boosting. So we should see now that when we go back to our, when we go back to the engine, if we go to ship, under player input, we need to make sure we hook up this new uh, boost button. So we can drag our spaceship script, scroll down, drop it into, ugh, make sure you hit the plus first, drag the spaceship script down here to boost, go spaceship on boost. So we can see this boosting checkbox here, just to show it working. It won't actually make us boost yet, obviously, but when we hold down shift, it says boosting. When we let go, it's false. And then, so shift, boosting's true. False, when we let go of boosting. So now what we need to do is that when we're boosting, uh, we need to do something down here to make our thrust go faster. So to do that, I'm gonna have a, um, another method called handle boosting. And I'll just pop this above the handle movement. So void handle boosting. Boosting, boosting. So this is this method. So if we're boosting and our current boost amount is greater than zero F, which we need to add a float for that uh, in a second. So boosting and current boost amount is greater than zero. So if we have boost left in the tank, then we want to reduce the current boost amount by the boost deprecation rate. And then if it hits zero, we want to flick boosting to false. And if we're not boosting and the boost is less than the max boost amount, we want to uh, replenish our current boost amount to up to the boost recharge rate. So here under boosting, uh, again, I'm going to make this public just so we can see it in the inspector. Um, it should be private really, and you'd have 
method so you're and then you'd have some sort of like hood visualization to show how much you've got um but i'm just going to do public flow current boost amount here uh, where we're thrusting uh, we made this flow current thrust uh, we can if we're boosting we want the current thrust to be to take into consideration the fact that we are boosting so to do that uh, so we've got our float here and we just all we do is if we're boosting then current thrust equals the thrust times by the boost multiplier And if we're not boosting, then the current thrust is just the normal. It's just the normal thrust amount that we've implemented um, in the inspector. So save that. Go back over into Unity. So when we hit play, we see that our current boost amount. Um, we saw. I just saw that it goes from zero, and then it ticks up each frame. Um, what you'd probably want to do is in the start method, just set the current boost amount equal to the max boost amount. So that means that the player will start with full boost straight away. So we've got our current boost amount here. Uh, I'm just gonna make the thrust value quite small just so we can see this kind of work in. And let's just pitch ourselves down. Keep going, keep going. Oh, okay. So I'm holding down thrust here. I just want to select the ship still. Okay, so we're going to go forward at quite a slow rate, and then we're going to hit shift, going to boost. Actually, let's set this to 20. So we're going to go forward, going to hit boost. We're going to go quickly, and then the current boost amount will go down. It's quite hard to show this. <laughs> so I set the max boost amount to 20. I'm going to set the boost deprecation rate to 0 0.1, the recharge rate to 0 0.15. The boost multiplier will just boot, bump it up to 10. And then for the thrust forward, keep that to 50. Okay, so watching those stats on the side. So we're going to move forward. We're going to hold down shift. We're going to boost and we'll see that the current boost amount will deplete. And then eventually it'll stop us boosting and we'll slowly come to a stop. See, we're over there. Uh, back in thrust. I was just, I'm just going to get rid of this current thrust equals thrust bit because that's determined here now. I'm just going to go back to the ship. Under the rigid body, I am going to give it a slight amount of drag just to have a natural kind of a bit more of a natural slowdown. Again, it's just what feels right. Um, so you, you can play with those values. You can play with the glide reduction here so we could have that slow us down a bit more. So you can see that we can go forward at X speed. If we let go, we'll slowly come to a stop. If we go forward and hold down a shift, We'll boost, we let go, we'll come to a stop. And the current boost amount will um, recharge. You can see it's gone a bit above 20, but it doesn't really matter. Then we could pitch round. Go forward, boost. Eventually we'll run out of boost, so we'll slow down to our normal thrust rate. We'll let go of W and we'll come to a stop. So there you have it. That's how to do kind of zero G arcade -y sort of flight mechanics within Unity. As I said, this works on a controller as well. Um, it's my kind of preferred way to play it. So this is me on a controller. Um, Obviously, with the stick and the uh, triggers, it's just a lot better. Um, it just feels a lot more responsive. We can hold B to boost. You can go up, down, roll, do all our strafing. 
boost a bit more. But yeah, there we have it. If we want to, we could add in some... If you wanted to add in some sort of stuff to give you a bit more of a point of reference, you could add in some cubes. Give them a rigid body. Set the mass to something low, like 0 0.05. You don't have to give them any drag if you don't want. Um, check, Uncheck use gravity. Let's just pull these forward. Just make a few of these. You can imagine this is cargo kind of in the world. It's being ejected from a ship that you've just pirated. As you go forward, we can boost in. And nothing happens because we don't have a collider on the ship which we can just add in, say, a capsule collider or a mesh collider if you wanted to. Um, make this go along the z-axis, increase the height, increase the offset, height, radius. Oh. Okay, so now, as we go forward, we boost into this box. You see the, the kind of cargo goes tumbling. And we've sent that flying. So there you have it. This is how to do the ship flight within Unity. If you liked this video, it'd be great if you could give the uh, video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. Uh, the next video, I'm going to be showing you how to do some first person zero G movement, which you can get a look at here. So yeah, subscribe if you want to see that. Um, as always, the project files for this tutorial, um, all my previous tutorials and all my future tutorials are over on Patreon. The link for that is in the description below. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.